这个都没办法过硬核啊。Test, test, good morning. Test, test, good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. It's a great day to be in the land of the living. We praise and thank God for this opportunity to come and worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so as we gather today and prepare ourselves to worship Him in spirit and truth, let's just pray together. Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to yet again come and worship you in spirit and in truth. So God, right now we can just honor you and we bless you and we praise you. God, as we celebrate our fathers today, let us, God, celebrate our eternal Heavenly Father as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to turn it over to our praise team and let them worship with us today.
Also this Saturday, we'll hold our annual meeting of the Cleveland Baptist Association, our denominational meeting. Uh, I will share a link Friday. Our delegates will be voting on uh, new trustees as well as a budget, so please join us. Uh, Denise Kennedy has been telling me to not forget to say happy birthday to everybody because we generally say happy birthday on the first Sunday and we have not done that since the uh, COVID interruption. And so let me say happy birthday to everybody from April, May, and June. And I'm not just saying this because my birthday just passed, amen, but thank you all for your love uh, for my birthday. Uh, finally, please keep Darlene McCoy, Renee Tanton, Daryl Lee, Bill Hicks, and Mickey Curtis in your prayers as they recover. And as usual, pray for your pastor, amen. Amen. Our text this morning can be found in Proverbs 20, verse 7. Proverbs 20, verse 7. It's a very, very, very brief sentence. The righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. The righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. Today I would like to share from a topic that we used a few months ago for Mother's Day. Love dead where you are. Love dead where you are. Last week, we spent some time discussing that lives matter to God. And indeed, black lives matter to God. We were joined by Pastor Joanna D'Agostino and the brothers and sisters from Lakewood Congregational Church. In fact, some of them will be with us on Friday as we hand out the uh, PPE packets. Today, I want to talk about loving your father where you are. Love is a very important concept for us and, and others, especially for Christians. This week, uh, I'm going to talk about loving your dead where you are. And, and before you log off, before you log off, I, I know that many of us have fathers who are no longer with us, and perhaps you have fathers who were absent. But, but, but we can still love them from where we are. Um, others may have difficulty because of their absent relationship with their fathers. This sermon is about loving dead, but it's also about loving as a concept. Of Christian understanding, a principle as the foundation of for our lives and for our living and for our loving and for our being. Today, there is simply not enough love in the world. We don't love our friends sometimes, our enemies, our families, sometimes we don't even love ourselves. And yet, love is the very foundation of our relationship with God and God's relationship with us. We are here because of the love of God. We mentioned last week in our, in our text that, that Christ gave his life because he loved us so much. He knew that our lives mattered, and he wanted us to love others. And it is the love that wakes us up in the morning, and the concept of, of, that gives us rest in the evening and allows us to live upon love. We recognize, realize, and relax, react to the fact that God is love. And that in and of itself makes love that much more important. We tend to think that we have to impress our fathers and with great careers and, and long resumes and impressive spouses. Sometimes we work so hard to please our fathers that we have no energy when we get around them. Others have a tendency to hide themselves from their true selves, from the one who brought them into this life. To, to be clear, some of us make our fathers deities instead of focusing on the living God who is the true deity. What if we align ourselves with God, wholly and authentically, and, and let God guide us, guide us into our destiny, uh, uh, not what we do, but more importantly, who we are? If that, when that loves you, and then he'll rejoice that you found the right relationship with, with the creator, our God, the creator of the universe, and that you are living your true destiny and becoming whole. Today, as we celebrate Father's Day, let us celebrate our fathers by loving them, loving God, and loving our families with the love of God, that agape, unconditional love that comes from God through us when we let go and trust God to lead us in our relationship with others. Fatherhood is a powerful privilege, a privilege of impacting, influencing, and inspiring the next generation, your children, your child. The impact of a father can be far-reaching, whether it is present or not. The influence of a father can determine the trajectory of a young life. The inspiration of a father can lift up or bend a life forever. The treasure of fathers being, brings, brings to our lives is remarkable and frankly unmatched. We want to love your father where you are. 
The text says the righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are the, their children after them. Love is free. We, we can love everyone around us and it actually costs us little and perhaps um, it adds to our lives. And it, it lifts us up and it encourages us. If you had a great dad, let him know that you love and appreciate him. If your dad was not so great, love and appreciate him anyway. Perhaps your dad never missed a game, never missed a party, never missed a summer. Celebrate your dad, appreciate your dad. The, the Bible reminds us that honoring our fathers and our mothers is the first commandment with the promise. There are some great dads at Lee Road Baptist Church. I got a few of them with me today. There's some great dads at Lee Road Baptist Church. There are some powerful examples of men who have been their best. Some have gone on to be with the Lord, but we honor them today. We celebrate them today. We remind them to remind ourselves today of how great they were in our lives. And perhaps your father wasn't there. Perhaps he didn't do all that he should have done or that you expected him to do. You can still love him for his role in giving you life. Life is too short to be mad and to hold grudges. Let's be free from the pain and the weight of anger, resentment, and unnecessary bondage. This life is too short for that. And at the end of the day, didn't God step in to be your father, to be your mother, to be your friend? Let's rejoice in the fact that today we have the opportunity to honor our fathers all around the world and those who were with us, those who were not. I work hard every day to make my father proud because of my love for him. I still obey things he shared with me, even though I'm an adult. And he doesn't have the chance to chastise me. Whether your father is local or otherwise, at, at home with you, or, or perhaps, you, perhaps you don't visit him because you fear getting him sick right now, or perhaps he's in a living, uh, assisted living facility. Today is a day to love dad from where you are. If you are blessed to be in the physical presence, uh, celebrate that even more. Love is more than mere ties and cards and, and, and tools and jewelry and perhaps dinner. Love is taking care of yourself, staying safe, staying healthy, staying focused. Love for your dad is more than what we do in, in our lives. It's how we live our lives, especially in this COVID season. What can you do today? to show your love for your father where you are. Love God's righteousness today. It's the second point that we find in this text. Love God's righteousness where you are. The text says the righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. We can't use the excuse of our father not to be good examples to our children. We can't use the, 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 the faults and the failures of our parents to give us an excuse not to be good parents ourselves. Those who have integrity, who live what they believe, exist without fear of some evil being discovered. While those who are perverse and have secret wickedness will not be able to hide forever. A righteous man or woman blessing his or her children by acting with integrity so they know that the choices you make every day both small and large, affect your children. What legacy do you want to leave for them? The righteousness, the righteous man walks in honesty and integrity. His children come into a noble heritage and benefit from his life and example. Our relationships are powerful tools and our relationships with our parents, particularly our fathers, has lasting impact on who we are. So fathers walk in integrity so your children can learn to be the men and women that God created them to be and to be men and women of integrity. Children seek the walk of integrity so that they may show that you are noble in character and content. Christians, we, call, we are called and anointed to walk in integrity. The character and content means something to us. We're called and anointed to be our best in our relationship with our Heavenly Father. We've been gifted to do better 
and more because we, of our relationship with a loving, living, powerful God whose spirit constantly seeks to guide our hearts and our living. What can we do today to show our love for God's righteousness where we are? Whether we are sheltering in place or whether we are in and out, can we show our love for God's righteousness now? The third thing the text shares with us is to love your family where you are. It says the righteous leave blameless lives, blessed are their children after them. When we do what we're supposed to do, it blesses our children and their children. Look, family is important. There's no two ways. And that's there. There is no two ways about that. We all seek out that relationship, whether it is our blood family, or our church family, or our work family, or our neighbors, or our neighborhood, our fraternities, and our sororities. We long for the relationship that we receive from our family, the support and concern that they share with our every up and our every down. We share with our families our, our biggest days and our joys. And we cry with them in our deepest sorrows, losses, and pain. Let's learn to love our families regularly and deeply. Those who share your blood and those who share your life. God has blessed us all to be a part of the human family, but our desire for deeper intimacy is important. Fathers, love your children deep enough for them to feel it, not just on the surface, not just out of your pockets. But serve from the heart, from the bowels, the Bible talks about. That's the innermost part of who you are and, and the strength of who you really are. Let your children see the integrity, the honesty, and the, and the righteousness that comes from being a child of the living God. Let them see you cry when it's a time to cry. Let them see you laugh when it's a time to laugh. Let them see you experience joy when it's a time to joy, and let them see you experience pain when it's a time for pain. One of the reasons why our children are so confused sometimes, even particularly like this generation, they get confused because we don't share with them. We don't share our ups and downs. We try to hide from them the things that we go through. And as a result, when they grow up, they don't understand how to deal with that pain when they experience it because we're all that experience it at some point or another. Children, we should love our fathers, present, absent, or gone on to be with the Lord. We will find our strength in doing what we ought to do, even if we don't want to, don't feel like it, or don't think it's necessary. Family, we must love our fathers and, 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 and our God and his righteousness and our families from where we are right now, today. My prayer for us is that we'll learn how to do that. Even if we don't believe it's deserved, we ought to do it. Because you know what? I thank God that God loves us, even though we don't deserve to be loved. Even though we haven't earned his love. Even though we haven't done what we were supposed to do. But because of his grace and his mercy, and because of his relationship with us, he loves us anyhow. Because we are his children. We are his, his inherit, we, we have his inheritance and we have the blessings of eternal life. And if God can do that for you, and if God can do that for me, then we should be able to do that for others, especially for our parents, for our mothers, and for our fathers. The Amplified Version says, the righteous man who walks in integrity and lives life in accord with his godly beliefs how blessed, happy, and spiritually secure are his children after him who have his example to follow. I don't care where you are today. I don't care what you've been through. And I don't care where you've been. Today is a great day if you are a father or a surrogate father to begin to present a powerful example for your children. Sometimes a change, a minor change, even at a very late date, can have a major impact. 
Let us all decide that this day will be a turning point, will be a rising point, will be the next point that we get to, so that our children and our children's children and their children will know how great God is because of the examples of our fathers. And to all children, I just want to leave these points with you. Show love to your father where you are. Seek his wisdom. Honor his legacy. Explore his family history. Show him respect. Express love. Celebrate Father's Day. Remember his birthday. Honor his wife. Pray for him daily. Respect his preferences. Surprise him with your love. And take, take him fishing. Let him know how much you care. Let him know how much you trust. And let him know how much you believe. Not just in him, but in your heavenly father, who has endowed you with the ability to love your fathers around you. And for those whose fathers have gone on to be with the Lord, I want you to remember to love them. Love them by how you live and how you take care of yourself and how you let yourself become an example to others of all that he has instilled in you. Today I want to challenge us to stop using the, the failures of the past as a reason for us not to be better. God knows. I don't care where you and your child's relationship is. If you've never seen them, I've only seen them twice. They long to know you and to understand you. And they long to be around you. So don't take that for granted. Even now, even way years later, do your very best to be your best from this day forward. Perhaps there's someone here who's watching this, but you've never accepted Jesus. I want you to take this opportunity to survey yourself and to think about what it means to have a loving relationship with the Heavenly Father who has never missed a game, who has never missed a party, who has never missed a summer. And what it would feel like to have a relationship with the true God who can guide you in your relationship with work and life. So today I want to offer you an opportunity. If you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to offer you that opportunity today. If you would, if you would just consider it in your mind, if you would like to accept Jesus, you can just repeat with me this simple prayer. Oh, my God, I thank you for waiting on me all this time. I confess that you are my Lord, and I ask you to come into my life. I believe that you were born, died, and raised again. And I confess that you are Lord. Today, I ask that you would change my life. And today, I accept you as my Lord. Please forgive me of my sins and lead my life. Thank you, God.
again, I want you to continue to pray for all of our sick and shut in. Please pray for those families who have been affected by and impacted and affected by COVID around the world. Please pray today for the families who are impacted by the killing of the killing of anybody by anybody. We ask for your prayer. I ask you to join me in praying for all of the protesters and demonstrators that they will be safe from even the impact of COVID-19. And I ask that you pray for each other. And indeed, let's pray for our fathers. Almighty and gracious God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone who is watching, listening, and engaged with us virtually. I pray for every member of Negro Baptist Church. I pray for those who have been able to connect and those who have not been able to connect. I pray for those who are making phone calls and sending cards and reaching out to other members of our family. God, I pray today that you'll touch every one of our members who are sick, those that we know of and those that we don't. As Darlene and Renee and Daryl and Bill recover, I ask that you'll speed up their recovery, dear God. I pray for those, God, who are continuing to battle illnesses and who are continuing to deal with the pain of grief and of loss. Could I ask that you speak life into their situations right now. Strengthen them. Be the peace that they need. Your peace will surpass us all in this setting. We pray for those who have been impacted by COVID around the world, God. We pray for our health. We pray for our economies, God. We pray for our unity. We pray for our sanity. We pray for our strength. Oh, God, I know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. So I'm just asking what I know. But I ask that you'll give us the things that we don't even know that you're willing to share with us. Lord, I pray for this nation, all of its confusion. I pray, God, that this movement for equality around our nation will become a form, a solidified form of who we are. That we will stop treating some people as if they're less, but that we will treat everyone as if all lives matter. And that we will understand in this nation that black lives matter. That we are not just chattel to be used to build a nation, but we're individuals who deserve to be loved, respected, and protected. And so God, I pray for all our men and women in blue, that as they take the oath to protect and serve, that you will protect them and guide them as they serve. We ask God that this movement that they're doing now will begin to remove the cops who don't need to be on the force and allow those who truly want to serve their communities to serve. Lord, we just ask you, in the name of Jesus, for your blessings upon our sister church, the Lakewood Congregation of Church, and all of our sister churches through the city of Cleveland, around this area, and across the, the nation. God, I just ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to bless now, God, our preparations for this weekend as we bless individuals with the protective, personal protective equipment that they need. And God, help us as we plan and prepare to come back together in person that you guide, direct, lead, and protect as only you can. Thank you, God, for everything. Thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do. And I pray, God, for everyone who is in this sanctuary, that you will give us the strength, give us the willingness, and give us the ability to deepen our intimacy with you. We love you, we praise you, we glorify you, and we honor you, both now and forever. And all who agree, won't you say amen, 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 amen. Give God praise as our praise team comes to bless us again. No, we Oh.
Hallelujah. The Lord, amen. Praise God. Spend some time today reflecting on his legacy, the lessons that he shared with you. And let's just encourage all the fathers that we know. Because we do know this. Being a father is not the easiest thing in the world. But God is able to keep you and to make you strong. And so today, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to worship and to give God praise and to honor him for this day. And I just pray that you, at this day, this opportunity, this time, that you would just continue to seek the Lord while he can be found. And get excited about what God is doing in our lives. Even though we can't come together right now, God is still in the blessing business. So pick up the phone and call somebody. Send somebody an email. Send somebody a text. Send somebody a message. Or do something to let people know that you appreciate just being alive. And we thank you, praise God, for each and every one of you. Again, I encourage you to continue to seek God now while he can be found. And now, unto a heavenly God who is able to keep us holy and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, be glory and majesty, dominion and honor, both now and forever. Wherever you are, say amen, say amen, say amen. Also, I want to remind you, I want to ask you to pray for Brother Will Bradley, Bradley, a member of our church. Um, he we funeralized his uncle, father, uncle, daddy on yesterday here at Negro Baptist Church. And so I ask that you keep him in your prayers. Uh, William Bradley, continue to keep him and his entire family in your prayers. God bless you. Have a great week. And let God continue to lead your life. Amen. Amen.